What's up guys, it's your boy Serge. So today we're gonna to talk about the new HP Spectre X360. We're gonna find out what makes this device tick. So I have this new laptop here with me right now. And the thing I noticed right away is, is this thing looks sweet and is extremely metallic and sturdy. In fact, I think this is one of the most sturdiest laptops HP has made in years. Uh, not to mention it does have the retractable um, tablet mode hinge here, which allows you to do a lot more. And let's take a look and see how well this thing performs. Basically, I'm gonna tell you the positives and negatives that I've experienced while using this product. I'm also gonna be covering gaming. So stick around if you do have any questions at all, be sure to leave a comment below and I will be getting back to you guys. All right, so let's pop this baby out of the box. We actually do get the sleep. So one of the first things that I noticed about this laptop was that it has the Hewlett Packard logo. So it doesn't just normally say HP, it's actually spelled out. This is really odd because the top three laptops that HP's make, made right now all have three different logos. The HP Spectre looks different from the HP Spectre the X360. Uh, the HP Envy just has the classical HP logo. Uh, so the branding is a little bit different on this laptop, but I like it. I think it actually looks pretty good. With. Now, it may not be a big deal to some, but the power connector on this thing is but ugly. It's actually one of the worst looking power connectors I've ever seen. And the thing is, when you jump to like the HP Spectre, which is their newer thin model, um, it has a nicer power connector. It just looks nicer, it works better, it's USB-C, um, but these old power connectors, I tell you, they're ugly, they're clunky, they look like something from Mars. You know, you have this elegant device here, and then they bring out this power cord that just looks really bad. The thing is, it works, and that's really the, the most important thing. But when you look at, for instance, like how the MacBooks are built, or how higher-end Ultrabooks like the HP Spectre are built, as opposed to the X360, you see that they didn't just make a good laptop, they made the charger look good, they made the box look good, the whole overall presentation looks really excellent. And that's the kind of difference you're getting when you're forking over an additional 100, 200, 300 for a more premium base laptop. When you lift up the laptop, you'd be pleasantly surprised. It feels really cold and it looks really minimalist. There's no edges, there's no lines. It's literally just like two slabs of metal. It feels very sturdy and I love this new look. New HP logo is definitely a winner in my book. When popping open the screen, most laptops are only gonna go about up to here. Some can go about that far if they're really good, but the HP Spectre X360 can go all the way flat on the table, which is great. But it can also do tent mode. So this is a mode you'd use if you're trying to do touchscreen, you know, like a presentation, like a PowerPoint. Um, and you're big on touchscreen, or you can literally just pick it up like a tablet, grab it and go. You have four feet, they have prop up the laptop, you have the side grill, and you have the cold metal on the back, it feels great. And you also have side firing speakers, which I'm really not a fan of. Basically the speakers are gonna sound muffled, which really sucks. If you've watched this far, I encourage you to continue watching and let me know if you have any questions, thanks. The trackpad is one of the other distinguishing features about this laptop. Let's get this out of the way and say it right now, Windows laptops are not known for their trackpads. In fact, in fact, if you talk to a Windows user who's got you know, a PC or a laptop of some sort, when you tell them that you like a specific laptop because of the trackpad, they're going to laugh at you. They're going to think that you're really weird. Uh, but the thing is, once you've experienced a good trackpad, you're really not gonna to wanna to go back because it's not gonna make a lot of sense to use something that's more slow, that doesn't respond quickly. Um, it's kinda of like using your cell phone. Your, your cell phone right now, if it's one of the newer cell phones, like the Galaxy S7 or the iPhone 6S, it's snappy. When you go to an older cell phone from, from three years ago, it's slow. This is what most Windows-based trackpads feel like. They feel slow. So when you try a trackpad like this one here, or like the ones on the MacBooks, you're gonna be very, very surprised because they're really fast. There's not a lot of input lag. When we're talking about ports, I was actually pretty impressed with this laptop. You get two USB ports, an HDMI, 
you get a mini display port and you get this interesting volume rocker that actually feels a lot like a phone volume rocker. That's something I was not expecting. You even have a power button on the side, which is really odd. I haven't seen too many HP laptops have that. You have the micro SD card slot um, and this really elegant looking grill along with the power connector. When lifting up the laptop, you'll see that there isn't much of a taper effect, only on the edges, but the majority of the laptop is about as thick as a USB port. When using the touchscreen and tablet mode, it isn't always as responsive, a little bit annoying to hold. Plus you have the keyboard on the back, which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It'd be nice if you can flip the keyboard around. I've seen some Lenovo's do this before. Guys, if you have any questions at all about this laptop, I encourage you to comment below because I will be replying to everybody's comments. Um, also, I have a question for you. Are you gonna be getting this particular laptop or are you thinking about a different version of this laptop? Maybe a different HP, like the HP Spectre. Maybe you want something a little bit more basic like the HP Envy, or maybe you're thinking about the HP Omen. Maybe you're looking for a gaming laptop. Let me know in the comments below and we can discuss about what kind of laptops we're thinking about getting. Journal hard drive for gaming a wireless mouse that I bought for about 25 bucks, works great. I'm gonna be doing Steam, Battle.net, and League of Legends. Here's the uh, external hard drive that I'm using. It's just a basic Seagate one terabyte, put all my games on there. This is the $25 Logitech mouse I picked up. I literally got it from my local store. I did not expect anything good from this mouse, but after using it for a little while, I'm actually very impressed. And no, I was not sponsored to say this. This is just genuinely a good product. All right, so let's give this game a shot. Let's play some Counter-Strike first. So with pretty much low graphics and on 1080p, the, the, the game doesn't really run well when playing casual mode. Uh, but if you're playing 5v5, you can almost run the game smoothly. I went and I turned down the 1920 by 1080 to something a little bit more manageable, 1280 by 720. This was able to bring my FPS up to a good 38 to about 50 ish and 35 was what I'd get in super intense moments but overall it ran pretty well. When examining the heat of the laptop we see that it gets about to 110 at the uh, mid base and about 117 at the exhaust fan so the fan is really hot but the thing is it's not hot enough to burn you. It is a little bit uncomfortable and annoying but overall it, it's fine. Next up we have League of Legends. So I decided to play a ranked game. It's been about good three or four months since last time I played. We have the graphics here on max. Everything very high, so 1920 by 1080p, vertical sync off. So overall, the game was running pretty good. We're getting around 35 to 60 FPS. So during intense moments, expect your FPS to drop to about 30. But you know what, I, I played this game and I won it and it was very manageable even at 30 FPS. When playing Grand Theft Auto, I noticed that I did crash a few times and uh, overall Grand Theft Auto is playable but is a lot more laggy than expected. I've seen laptops with the same hardware do better. So with World of Warcraft I had a similar experience. The game literally crashed a couple times. Uh, but once I got it up and running, everything was good except for the sound. Uh, I did have to put all the graphics down to lowest possible uh, with 1280 by 700 kind of poorly. Diablo 2 actually ran pretty decent. I was able to play at around 45 to 50 FPS at 1280 by 800. You can run at about medium graphics and pretty much enjoy the game. I do have a little bit of lag here in this video, but it wasn't actually lagging during the gameplay. For some reason the capture device was lagging. Here I am killing some... Uh, some creeps and some zombies. StarCraft 2 actually ran really, really poorly. I was not expecting this at all. The same type of graphics that's in here should be able to run games much better. So StarCraft 2 pretty much ran um, even on medium graphics, 1280 by 800, it ran fairly laggy. Only when you put all the graphics on absolute lowest can you play at playable frame rates of around 50, 60 to about 100 FPS. Take a look at what happens when I put the FPS to really low. But if I put the graphics to medium, it, it runs pretty bad, still getting around 35 to 40 FPS. 
Imagine if you were playing a multiplayer game with more than one person. I only have six soldiers here out in the field. This game probably definitely not playable unless you're running everything on lowest. Which specific configuration are you thinking about getting? Are you gonna go for the eight gig? Are you gonna go for the i7 model? What's your reasoning behind picking those? Um, in my particular case, I only suggest people for most of the time to pick the four gig and the i5, get the eight gig if you're gonna video edit, but don't bother getting the i7 because it's just gonna slow your system down. I wanted to thank you guys for watching this far. Uh, I know this review is not perfect. Uh, I wanted just to give you guys my insight about this particular laptop, how it plays games, what were my impressions about it. Uh, if you want a laptop with an awesome trackpad, definitely pull the trigger on this one. If you want one that has good build quality and meteor ochre like gaming capabilities, definitely this is probably the one for you. Now I say mediocre because again, this has an integrated graphics chip. It does not have an option to give you a dedicated chip, so this laptop's gonna be pretty good for most people. It doesn't matter what you're really gonna be doing with it. Like if you want to um, be a programmer or if you're a student in college, it's gonna work. It's gonna do just about everything for you. Thing is, it does not have options for more powerful processing units, like a 35 watt CPU, and it doesn't have the, the dedicated graphics chip like I mentioned earlier. So. Having said that, I feel like this laptop is more of a mid-range laptop with good build quality and I feel like it doesn't bring anything very, you know, new to the table besides its big trackpad. It does have a big trackpad, but it also has this hinge technology, which is interesting. Uh, but again, the hinge technology feels to me more like a gimmick than anything. It's cool that you could do that. I feel like there may be too much marketing behind the hinge itself. I feel like most laptops should just be able to do that naturally. I feel like it's a cool feature, uh, but all in all, it's not a game changer. Now, what I really wish they added was an option for a stronger CPU, it's not just an i7. I want the 35 watt. I don't want the weaker 15 or 20 watt uh, CPU. I want the powerful 35 watt, something you'd find in a 15 inch laptop. Uh, I, I want an option like that. Uh, and I would also like to see a dedicated graphics chip option or maybe Iris 540 on this laptop. So I've seen three main laptop categories. Actually, there's a fourth one, that's the gaming, gaming type of laptops. But there's a standard laptop that's fairly thick. Thick, doesn't have a whole lot of things that make it look nice. And it might have some decent specs. Then there's the Ultrabook class, which looks thin, a lot like this, performs pretty good fairly powerful. And then there's the netbook slash ultrabook type of style laptop. And that would be something more like, more like the HP Spectre, which has similar performance as this one here, but is thin like a netbook and more, pow more powerful, more portable. They're the ultra, ultra portable uh, laptops that we've only recently started seeing about a year ago. If you heard about the 12 inch MacBook, they're one of the first to implement the Core M. What makes the HP Spectre special is that it's as thin, if not thinner than the, than the MacBook, but it actually has a powerful i5, i7 processor. I, I wonder how they managed to fit all that in there. It's quite impressive. All of the newer HP laptops include this little accent at the top here. Essentially, it's just a design accent. I noticed with this particular laptop, I could actually open it up with one hand with ease. A lot of uh, laptops from about a year ago still have this problem. There's even some HP laptops like the HP Envy you can buy that still have the issue where you can't open it up with one hand. I call it the uh, open one hand ability test. Can you open it up with one hand? If you can, the thing is it actually saves you a lot of time. Most of you are probably thinking, well, who cares? You know, I don't bother with that. But the thing is, um, all the things you do on your computer do add up and this makes it substantial substantially easier to use when you don't have to fiddle with your device to try to get it to work. This model that I have here, this is the 1080p model. It's got four gigabytes of RAM, the i5 processor. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, do not upgrade the processor because it's not really gonna give you a performance boost. Plus the HP Spectre X360 is known to thermal throttle. So if you bump up to the i7, there's a higher chance that it will throttle. Um, the fan design here is designed to be fairly quiet and the laptop can get kind of toasty, as you can see here. But the thing is, it still performs well, 
and I was actually impressed that I could play a few games on here and really not have that many issues. I was able to play the most popular games from Steam, uh, Battle.net, League of Legends, I even threw GTA at it and it played most of them pretty good. Hey guys, I wanna say thank you for watching this video. If you have any tips on how I can improve the video, um, or if you have any ideas on what my next big video should be about, leave a comment down below. I did want to mention that I will be reviewing the, the HP Envy and the HP Spectre. So if you're interested in those laptops, definitely hit that subscribe button and uh, let's talk about them for a little bit. Um, and if you just have any questions at all, I'm here for you guys. So do not hesitate to ask. I did want to mention that I do have the HP Spectre and the HP Envy with me as well. And these reviews will be coming very soon. So if you are interested in HP laptops, I do highly encourage you to subscribe.